welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about Vuncom, and it's this little guy here. And I'm going to talk about wound care. So wound, wounds, when you cut yourself, when you're kind of slicing the onions at home, you open the skin, and it can be infected, for example. But usually it works out. You stop bleeding, and then everything goes by, and you soon have just itching, and, and it goes well. But sometimes it stops, and it gets to a vicious cycle, and that's chronic wounds or hard-to-heal wounds, depending on how you want to say it. These wounds are open, and they do get colonized by bacteria. So, almost everyone is that, and when those get activated, the patient gets antibiotics to clear them. Almost 65% of every wound that we take care of in the medical system are chronic wounds. So, those ones do get a lot of antibiotics. They get bacterial infections, as well as the surgical wounds can do, as you've heard, probably heard about, and also trauma wounds. Why is this important? Well, we have a problem on our hands. It's resistant bacteria, multi-resistant bacteria. Almost 100 people a day in Europe die from multi-resistant bacterial infections. Not with, from. And why is this? Because we've overused and misused antibiotics for a long time. And it's not only the food market or food processes that have been doing this. It's the medical as well, and still doing. So where do we come in? Yeah, of course, we want to treat it where it is. So we've developed a wound dressing that looks like some kind of disc cloth. And it's based on only natural ingredients. It's kind of an artificial um, skin. It has collagen 1, that's all in the skin. And then it has peptides from collagen 6, called 6. Those peptides, they are antibacterial, and they also exhibit wound healing properties, or cell proliferative properties. Combining those two, you get a wound dressing that can do both. It can elevate and be good for the wound, for wound healing, the cells in there, kind of get rid of, of all the vicious inflammatory signals, but also take care of the bacterial infection, and that is really crucial. If one then try, try these out and put bacteria, there's a green bugger that's there, uh, on the product, you don't get anything, it doesn't really happen anything if you don't have the peptides there, that's the collagen. And then in Wooncom, they get killed, they burst, and they kind of do all these, you know, that we've colored pink here. So the pinkish stuff is a debris from bacteria. On the other hand, if you have human fibroblasts and put those on the material, it grows quite well on collagen 1. And that was collagen 2 in the skin normally. Well, if we have the peptides there, it's actually elevated, so they grow even better. This means that there is a wound healing activity. Using those in vivo um, on highly infected wounds in pigs. The, these pigs are healthy. They will take care of the infection. They will take care of the wound in around 21 days. But if you use wound comb, two to four days, the wounds were totally clear from infection and had healed. This is the effect we have on, um, with Wundcom. 
So call six here then, where we are, are we? Well, next year we're gonna have our first clinical investigation on hard to heal wounds, venous leg ulcers. And to do that, we need to have passed everything with kind of uh, the manufacturing and the biosafety or the safety program and an effic efficacy study in, in uh, animals as you saw. Pigs are not the only ones we have tested on, or we have some case studies in horses. This is, of course, a kind of huge but also crowded market. But what is a wound dressing? It's everything from just a band aid where you're just going to kind of try to not get blood everywhere to very advanced wound dressing for very advanced wounds. Burn wounds, you, ha you need maybe a um, skin transplant, then you have a reconstruction of the skin, but you also have these kind of hard to heal wounds. There are a lot of different kind of uh, wound dressing out there. But no one has the natural ingredients that we have combined. Some collagen dressing have silver, and they have PHMB, but those are toxic in the long run, because they're toxic to uh, normal cells. So, the market is, of course, quite large with all these kind of different ways of thinking. US is the uh, largest market, um, mainly because, or it is used market, but also because they kind of positive for collagen, if we just look on collagen dressings. But why should we? We should, of course, look at all the potential wounds, and spe especially potential wounds that could be infected which is almost any wound, though, but one could then market it in. This is a class three medical device. That means that we, of course, differently, we need to do this uh, clinical investigation. We also have to apply for a CMARC or an FDA approval or and an FDA approval. And it takes a while. And while doing this, we will enter and um, work on the veterinary market. We also have the peptides. So Col6 is built on the peptides from Collagen 6. We have interest from some players that would like to in-license, that means that we out-license the peptides for other applications. Because we also have a technology where you can glue them on to a lot of different materials. So while awaiting, we intend to have some revenues on those. Of course then, as the first clinical investigation is on hard to heal wounds, we would like to expand to other indications and also to other ter territorials uh, except, um, in addition to Europe and US. I'm of course standing to here uh, and talking, uh, not only because I want you to know about this great wound dressing that you would like to use and you can use on your horses and dogs and cats um, for now. But also, we need some funding and some uh, money to do these things that we would like to do. We have secured the clinical investigation, but uh, there are a lot of more things we would like to do. And these are some few, few of them. Today here, I also have uh, with me my uh, chairman of the board, uh, Jens Hansson. So afterwards and during lunch or whenever, please contact us and we will answer all your questions, show you some samples and uh, some results. Thank you. Thank you, Karin.
Okay. Wow, that is super soft. Yeah, <laughs> it's super soft, <laughs> definitely. Uh, well, that's actually a perfect segue for my first question. Why is the cloth the best product, and why not an injection or another form of administration? Um, that's a good question. Um, this, as I said, is a medical device. It means that um, turning that around, if we were putting the peptides into some other administration, it would be a pharmaceutical, and that would probably work as well. The good thing here is that we know that the collagen one matrix, or the scaffold here, is a well-known product, and it works perfectly for for some wound healings, but it doesn't have the antibacteria. So it's kind of a, a very nice product, a uh, new extension of, 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 a, of a product that's already there. So I wouldn't say that uh, it's not possible. It could be possible, mm -hmm. um, but it has another root, of course, uh, if you have it uh, in, in some other way. Yeah, we'd use a different uh, regulatory framework. Definitely. Of course. Yeah. And that actually brings me to my next questions. What are some of the challenges, the regulatory challenges, for a class three medical device? Uh, it's the same for any uh, medical device, of course, that it has to be tested in, in these kind of ways. These, this, the challenge with this one is that it's a class three with additional peptides in it. So it's kind of, we have to, to have a very close look at the peptides as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I don't see any more challenges than a 2A or 2B, more or less. It's, it's just that it is need to be safe. I mean, the regulatory path is make it safe mm -hmm. and it should be efficacy. So that's for anyone. Sure. And uh, you talked about testing this on um, pigs and horses. Yeah. Um, how translatable, how easy is it to translate this into humans? So, uh, it could be. Yes, horses is, is interesting because horses' legs. So, those, test, the, those kind of case studies that we have, uh, I can show anyone that's interesting. I have some kind of pamphlets on them, they, they kind of try to jump something or kick to uh, glass doors or something. And horses legs do have a bit of a bad circulation, which means that they resemble the situation you have on a chronic wound. Mm. So that could be translated quite well. You don't use, we don't use it in kind of the arguments, but it could be. Uh, we would like to actually then do a a um, clinical trial on horses, mm. yes, for the, not only for the veterinary market, but also to kind of have to translate it to the human situation. But I mean, we're starting the human trial, so, yeah. <laughs> or investigation. Uh, once you get to human trials, uh, how uh, difficult will it be to recruit patients? Um, the clinics that we have, um, contact that, that's kind of in our, uh, application now, they don't think it's it's that bad. Um, of course, this is elderly people usually, um, and they need to go to the hospital, uh, the clinic, uh, once a week. That could be an issue or a kind of challenge. Uh, but there is a lot of, of they, they have, I mean, when you ask them how many patients do you your clinic meet, it, it's hundreds uh, every uh, week. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but they still go down to, to a little bit less than uh, recruiting, but I don't, I don't believe it should be that difficult. We're doing uh, the clinical trial in Germany, so it's a, a bit larger population than we have here. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, we've run out of time, unfortunately, but yep. there are some other questions here, and I'm sure if you want to ask uh, Karin more questions, feel free to ask her in the, in the lunch break. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Thank You're you so much. very welcome. Thank you. <laughs>